Good morning. John Stetton, Pastor Wire, PastorWire.com, Pastor Wire YouTube channel, and what else can we be here to talk about this morning? As always, we're going to try and take you Pastor Wire in the Sport of Kings, Thoroughbred Horse Racing, and yesterday was certainly a day for Kings. I mean, we saw Justify become the 13th Triple Crown winner. We saw him do it in style. Uh, he is the second undefeated Triple Crown winner, the first being Seattle Slough. And uh, I mean, it was, a, it was a heck of a day in the Sport of Kings. And uh, there are a lot of, you know, interesting takeaways from the race, everything that transpired. And uh, it'll be interesting to look at, at, at Justify. And, you know, the first thing that jumps out at me, and it's, it's, it's just, you know, a, a, an odd uh, idiosyncrasy of the game or, or, or whatever you want to call it. But, you know, Triple Crown winners, historically, there's only been 13 of them. And, you know, they seem to come in spurts of, of, of a couple of years together and then long, long droughts. We had American Pharaoh, you know, break a long drought a couple of years ago. Now, a couple of years later, uh, we've got Justify, repeat the performance. And it takes me back to two different times in my history of the game. Uh, Justify is the fifth Triple Crown winner that I have seen. And, you know, when Secretariat did it, then a couple of years later, we had Seattle Slew and Firm to come through and do it. We had Spectacular Bid almost do it within that, you know, same little little period there. Um, and, you know, Spectacular Bid had a couple of legitimate excuses. Uh, but that aside, let's just talk about what did and didn't happen. You know, we had those three in a close period of time and, and, and another horse almost. So with that said, People at the time were saying, oh, it's so easy, you gotta make it tougher, all these horses are doing it now. And then we had that long drought and people were saying, oh, it's too tough, nobody's ever gonna do it again, we'll never see another one, we gotta change the races, change the spacing, change the distances, all nonsense. The Triple Crown is one of the toughest achievements and accomplishments in all of sports, not just horse racing. It's supposed to be hard, but 13 horses have shown us that if you're good enough and things go right, you can get it done. Uh, you know, we, we've seen it now. We've seen it before. It doesn't need to be changed. It doesn't need to be altered, tweaked. It's not broke. You don't have to fix what's not broke. Uh, we'll see more of them, uh, God willing. Uh, you know, Justify is special because of, you know, knocking down that Apollo curse that stood for so long with, you know, no horse having not raced at two, winning the Kentucky Derby. I always say, and, you know, anybody who, who pays attention to, you know, my column or, 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 or the broadcast knows that, you know, all those stats all come down at some point eventually. You know, none of them mean anything on any given race day. So with that in mind, you know, that, that, stood a long time, Justify overcame that, uh, was looked upon in very high regard early on in his career by all his connections and even a lot of people who were just around him and around the racetrack. Uh, I know a lot of people who, you know, told me about this horse very early on, right before he broke his maiden, right after he broke his maiden, how special he was and how good he was going to be. And all of that, you know, he lived up to all that hype, uh, you know, say what you will. He, he, he got it done, you know? I mean, he brought it in every one of the three races. He made his own trips, made his own luck, didn't let anything interfere with him, and, and, and got it done on a racetrack. Now, we'll talk a little bit more in detail about that, you know, when we look at, at, at the three races. The Derby, he handled a sloppy track, uh, very impressive race, broke the Apollo curse, came right back into Preakness two weeks later, had another sloppy track, jumped up in the air. Uh, Mike was able to shut him down the last few strides, got home, even though, you know, Bravazo and Tenfold were, 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 were coming. He kind of shut him down. Didn't see those horses to the outside of him and uh, was kind of surprised they, they came as hard as they did, but he already had the wire measured, got it done, saved a little bit for three weeks later. 
you know, came back in three weeks, this time on a fast track, which he had already run on. And, you know, leading up to the race, you know, one of the observations I put, I, I put a, a post up on social media and I said, you know, he was eating his breakfast the morning before the Belmont. And I said, look at this call. He looks like he doesn't have a care in the world. And maybe he doesn't. Uh, he's just all that. And he knew it. He was, uh, you know, exuding confidence. If you watched him, uh, he was the same way when he got, every time he got off a van, got to a new surrounding, got off the plane, he walked around like a boss every time. Uh, and it was fun to watch. And another thing that I noticed going into this race, Mike Smith, um, you know, always humble, always a gentleman, always first class, was very quietly confident, you know, just very cool, calm, confident, and it was noticeable. Uh, Bob Baffert was the same way. I don't think they were all that worried. Um, you know, I guess you've got inherent anxiety to get that done, but, uh, I don't think they were all that worried and they, uh, you know, they were confident he was going to bring his race and he certainly did. Um, now that said, uh, a lot of people are talking about, you know, restoring hope in the race that he ran and, you know, why he was in the race. He did break out, show a lot of speed. He did go wide. He, he, you know, it did look like on, uh, on the films that, you know, he was kind of, you know, running as a wingman for, uh, for Justify. And, you know, that's something that, you know, maybe publicly will never be spoken about, but um, I don't know that it really mattered. I think, you know, and as I said before the race, uh, what was gonna determine the race was pace. Pace makes the race. And, you know, it wasn't only pace, it was also whether anybody made Justify work hard you know, during the early part, the first three quarters or the first mile of the race. And that didn't happen. Nobody made him work hard. He, you know, set a leisurely pace. He was, you know, well within himself, uh, you know, with those fractions. And you kind of knew there was plenty of gas left in the tank for anybody who came at him. And when Gronkowski, who ran a huge race to run second, you know, first time on the dirt, first time Chad Brown, first time Lasix, uh, you know, he just, he, he ran a huge race, but when he, you know, ranged up into contention, there was plenty of gas left in the tank. And, you know, without anybody having forced Justify to run much faster earlier, or at least, you know, running head and head with him and get him a little bit keyed up and exerting energy, even if he went a little slower, because that will happen with horses. Um, you know, it, uh, uh you know, watching the race after I saw the splits for the half mile, 48 and change, I'm like, this race, this race is over. Uh, you know, if you watched how he was running and how Mike was sitting, I mean, it didn't, you know, look like anybody was going to really threaten him. You know, Hofberg ran a good race to run third. Uh, you know, still very lightly raced and experienced, high quality horse that will continue to get better. Did have a little trouble in this race as well. So he had some trouble in the Derby, had a little less trouble you know, in the Belmont, but some trouble, maybe, maybe would have been second, maybe not. Gronkowski, you know, missed the break and came for second. So I don't know if he breaks, might have been a closer, tougher race. And I thought, you know, he might even show some speed. Uh, it just didn't happen, you know, with the way he broke. But all, all in all, you know, in the broadcast I did before the race, I thought it was not that complicated. I thought it came down to Justify or Hofberg and the pace would determine what happened. Unfortunately, you know, betting wise, I leaned to Hofberg, but you know, used them both. But you know, that 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 being said, you know, the pace just didn't set up for anybody to really give him a challenge. However, you know, Mike Smith and the horse made their trips. He's got that kind of speed, he's got that kind of cruising ability, and he's got that kind of you know tactical advantage where he can go to the front, sit right off it, you know, stalk a little bit, go whatever he wants to do, and when you run that way, you make your own luck. Uh, you know, go back to a horse like Zenyatta, uh, who comes from, you know, last every time, they don't make their own luck. They're kind of pace dependent, you, you know, so when they get up uh, for 10 in a row or something like that, it's like, wow, you know, how do you come from off the pace, you know, and do that into a fast pace, slow pace, you know, horses that have that kind of natural speed and can kind of put themselves in position have an advantage. So, uh, 
you know, it takes nothing away from the accomplishment, then, you know, Justify has a phenomenal resume. Uh, I don't think that we'll ever see a three-year-old accomplish so much in a short period of time. I think it puts an exclamation point on Bob Baffert being just, you know, simply the best at what he does and getting these horses ready for these big races and to just, you know, peak when he wants them to, maintain that form, do everything right. Uh, everything went right with this horse throughout the whole campaign. He had that little blip when he was favoring that, you know, uh, hind leg, but uh, that turned out to be nothing as, uh, as, as, as Bob said it was. He was fine in a day or so. Uh, certainly didn't hinder him on the racetrack at all. Um, and uh, I have a feeling, and I don't know this, but I just have a feeling that, you know, we may have seen the last of Justify on the racetrack, uh, which is unfortunate, but it's a part of the game that we've got to deal with, you know. He's worth a lot of money right now. I don't know, 60, 80 million dollars. I don't know. You know, his stud fee is going to be ridiculous. He's going to service a lot of mares every year. So, uh, you know, how, how uh, you know an insurance policy to insure him is going to cost a fortune. Uh, and, and all you could really do at this point is, you know, you run the risk of getting him hurt or uh, get, uh, him losing. And, and then all you really do is kind of devalue and put a little, a little chink on that resume. And I don't know that from a business standpoint... Uh, that's worth it. So I have a feeling, you know, and I hope I'm wrong, that uh, we don't see him on a racetrack again. You know, I, 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 again, I hope I'm wrong and, and, and that we do, but I just got a feeling that, uh, you know, it's off to, the, off to the breeding shed for Justify. And, uh, you know, big, big, big money is going to come along with that. So, you know, what kind of races? I mean, even if he should win the Breeders' Cup Classic and the Pegasus or, so, you know, those ridiculous races, that's only a dent in what he can do in the, in the breeding shed. So, you know, you want, would, would you take that chance, honestly, if that was you and your horse? I mean, we love racing and we would love to see it, but uh, you can't fault a business decision like that when there's that much money at stake, you know? Um, from a sportsman standpoint and, you know, as a lover of the game and, and, and knowing that these animals improve as they go from three to four and even five and as they get older, you know, I'd love to see it, but I just don't know that we will. Uh, it remains to be seen. But anyway, uh, those are the biggest takeaways. I know, I think, I think all the real takeaways, you know, the, o the only other thing we can maybe touch on is, you know, the common ownership, the common trainers, uh, you know, with all these good horses. I mean, it takes a, a away from the sportsmanship. You know, I did a prior, a previous broadcast on that. And, you know, I don't want to be too redundant here, but it's, you know, it's not the most uh, fun and sportsmanlike aspect of the game. It's certainly different than it was years ago, but it is what it is. You know, what are you going to do? But, uh, you know, we saw a great performance. We take nothing away from the horse. He's a special animal. Uh, all credit and props to, you know, justify, you know, triple crown winner, Bob Baffert, unbelievable trainer, maybe the best trainer ever in the game, certainly in the conversation, no matter who you want to put in there and what era you want to go to, uh, you know, he's got to be in the con a conversation based on his resume, and Mike Smith, uh, one of the best ever, and great guy, humble, great for the game, uh, we saw a great piece of history yesterday, uh, watch the replay. It's uh, it's it's just you know special to watch, and uh, we may see another one sooner than you think. Like I said, they come in spurts. Always more on PastorWire.com. You could sign up on the website to get uh, you know emails of these broadcasts right to your to your inbox. The weekly column right to your inbox. You can go on there, look at all kinds of past columns about you know betting, handicapping, stories, different different things. Uh, Throughout the game, latest news, catch up on it. Uh, our YouTube channel, subscribe to, to you know check out these broadcasts. I hope you like them. Send me a comment or a message. Anything you want me to address, always happy to do it. And uh, as always, we'll be back with more. And ciao for now.